There was a lot of science to take on board in that last video, but don't worry if you didn't follow it all. All you really need to know is that lifting weights creates tears in the muscle fibre and builds up the amount of fluid in the muscle cells, and that both these processes contribute to muscle growth and strength. Both of these processes also hurt slightly. No matter what anyone tells you, and some people try to deny this, working out to build muscle should be uncomfortable. It's a very specific type of pain and you shouldn't push it too far. But building up lactic acid, which accumulates along with the metabolites, and tearing the muscle both cause the muscle to burn during your training and the next day. Ask any bodybuilder or athlete and they'll say the same thing. No pain, no gain. Now the trouble we face is going to be trying to get the muscle to grow using your own body weight. If you're training with weights, this is easy. All you have to do is add an extra 10 kilograms to your bar and you've made it more difficult. But if you're training with your body, then things get significantly harder. Once you can do 100 press-ups, how can you make it more difficult? Well, fortunately, there are a number of tricks and methods we can use. The good news is that your body doesn't care whether you're lifting a heavy weight or not. As far as your body is concerned, the amount of force is all that matters. So we can keep the weight the same, our bodies, as long as we increase the amount of force we're using. One way to make training more difficult is simply to change the angle of the exercise. This is called extending the lever arm, which basically means that we're moving the weight, our body, further away from the point where we're applying force. This makes the exercise more difficult because the amount of force generated has to be greater. The easiest way to demonstrate this is by doing a press-up. Get into push-up position as you normally would do, but now instead of performing a press-up like that, you're going to move your arms down slightly so that they're level with the bottoms of your pecs, and you're going to turn your hands to face slightly outward. What you have just done is to extend the lever. Now you're lifting more weight because your body is hanging over the top and the force needs to travel further along your arms and at an angle. Although the amount of weight hasn't changed, the amount of force has. And this is called a Maltese press-up, by the way. As far as your muscle fibre is concerned, acceleration and strength are the same things. In other words, to contract your muscle quickly is exactly the same thing as to contract your muscle hard. This means we can now use something called plyometrics in order to train the same explosive fast twitch muscle fibers as we would with a heavy weight. The perfect example? Well, clapping press-ups. Simply perform press-ups as normal, but launch yourself up into the air as high as you can and clap once or twice. In doing this, you're still performing press-ups with the same amount of weight, but now you're launching yourself into the air through the sheer acceleration. You'll find you fatigue a lot more quickly as a result. Want to quickly double the amount of weight that you're using to lift yourself during a pull-up? Well, the very simple solution is to remove one arm from the bar. This way, you're now lifting the same amount of weight, but with just one bicep, one lat, and one side of your body. The same applies for press-ups and tricep dips and numerous other types of exercise. At this point, you're probably wondering how you ever get to the point where you can perform pull-ups with one hand. And the simple answer is to transition gradually. In other words, you can start by putting 70% of your weight on one hand and 30% on the other. This requires you to manipulate the amount of force you exert on each side too, and in doing that, you're improving your mind-muscle connection and also your agility and body control. Very cool. So, perform a pull-up leaning slightly more to one side, then move more towards the other side on the next rep and continue to alternate like that. This way, you're going to be able to gradually build up the strength to lift yourself entirely with just one side eventually. 
as you can see then, there are plenty of ways you can make body weight training hard. Can you do a handstand push up with one hand yet? Can you hold planche? Now that's arms on the Maltese push up position, legs hovering behind you. If not, then you haven't exhausted all the possibilities with body weight training yet. The problem is that a lot of people just don't apply these techniques right when doing body weight training to try and build muscle. They do 30 press ups three times and then they call it a day for pecs. Either that or they have a weak attempt at a Maltese push up or at a one handed pull up and then they give up. But remember, to accomplish the very most growth, you need to increase volume and that means the amount of repetitions and the amount of weight. And you need to find ways to push yourself past failure. If you stop before you're forced to, then you won't cause those micro tears and you won't trigger that much growth. And this is where we can turn to bodybuilders for inspiration. They will combine a number of different exercises in unique ways in order to push past failure and increase their volume and their time under tension. These techniques are referred to as intensity techniques or the Joe Wider principles. They include things like drop sets which involve lowering the weight each time you reach failure and then doing more reps. They also include supersets switching quickly from one move to the next giant sets, performing huge combinations of different exercises with no rest in between, burns, performing as much of the movement as they can once their muscles have tired out and given up, rest pause, stopping halfway through the movement so that they aren't able to rely on momentum to help them through, pre-exhaust, that's exhausting one muscle group before an exercise so that the other muscles have to work on their own, cheats, which is cheating through the move so that they can do a couple more reps and more. This is how you need to start thinking about your body weight training if you want to trigger maximum muscle growth. This means that you just don't do three sets of 10 all the time. Instead, you might use something called a mechanical drop set, which means that you make the weight lighter each time you fail, but changing your position. For instance, you could do clapping press-ups to failure, normal press-ups to failure, press-ups on your knees to failure, or one-handed pull-ups to failure, two-handed pull-ups to failure, assisted pull-ups to failure. Now you're fatiguing the fast twitch muscle fibers multiple times during the movement and you're pushing yourself far past failure. You've increased the weight, the time under tension and more, and you should feel this start to burn the muscle. Really focus on that. Listen to your body and try to feel how your muscles are responding. Can you feel the pump and burn? Are you getting the same kind of workout from this training as you would do by lifting heavy weights in the gym? If it doesn't feel hard enough, then you need to go back to the drawing board and start making it harder. You can even use burns at the end of these sequences. So once you've done as many pull-ups as you can, simply hang and perform as much of the movement as you can and feel the muscle burning as you do. You know, who said body weight workouts had to be easy? Note that for this kind of intense training, you should avoid training the same muscle groups more than once a week. You know, this isn't like the SSE workout because it's too much to do every body part like this every day. Instead, split your workouts into three separate days. So on one day you do push, that's press ups, dips, shoulder press. Second day, pull, pull ups, biceps, chin ups. Third day, legs, squats, lunges, calf rises. Use multiple exercises that are similar and repeatedly push each muscle group to failure. You can perform PPL once or twice a week and then just make sure to rest well and eat lots of protein during your off days.